Today's episode's once again brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial by going to www.audibletrial.com slash epic fails. Epic with a K. July 16th, 1945. At 5.30 a.m., the atomic age began in a blazing nuclear fireball. Unleashing 18.6 kilotons of radioactive power at the Trinity test site in Los Alamos, New Mexico. A blinding flash of light brighter than a dozen suns lit up the sky, and a shockwave of searing heat burst forth, obliterating everything within its radius for miles. A column of debris bloomed into an ominous mushroom cloud of fallout particles. The test could be seen from 250 miles away and had the yield of 5,000 tons of TNT. In stunned silence, J. Robert Oppenheimer whispered to himself, it worked. From steel to gunpowder, we've come a long way from the days of killing our fellow man with Stone Age clubs and wooden spears. Now all you have to do is press a button to end all life on the planet. I'm Eric Slater, and this is Epic Fails of History. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Well, when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. Epic fails. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Robert F. Kennedy. Hey everyone, thank you so much for your patience on this one. I know I've been teasing this episode for a while now. Chris and I actually recorded this back in July of 2019. So it's almost been a full year as of this recording. (laughs) Initially, I was planning on having the episode out by last October. Clearly that didn't happen. So on the day we recorded this, a number of things actually went wrong. I think we were originally planning on recording it over at Chris's place, and that fell through for one reason or another, and we eventually decided to try and record it at the Buckman Bridge Unitarian Universalist Church. It was kind of a middle ground between each of us, and got the okay, I borrowed the keys from someone, and got there to set up early. I wouldn't have any um, surprise issues or whatever. Went to set up, I punched in the wrong security code (laughs) and the security alarm went off so I was panicking I was trying to get a hold of someone before the cops showed up luckily the crisis was averted and on top of all that we went to set up the mics one of the mics wasn't working but luckily I had a portable mic on me so between all that between the technical difficulties this This two-parter was a monster to edit. And I'm not making excuses, but it's one of the many reasons that this episode was a little on the late side. So without further ado, this is episode 20, The Cuban Missile Crisis, Cold War on Defrost. So today I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Carroll. Ahoy, hoy. And Brett Ricketts. How are you guys doing? Good. It's a pleasure you? being here. Awesome to have you. Um, we've actually wanted to have Brett on the show for quite a while. He's a high school history teacher. He is kind of an expert on the Cold War. So I figured uh, he might be a good one to have on for an episode about the Cuban Missile Crisis. So the pressure's high. So there's, there's no mistakes. <laughs> there's no room for error here. I'm not sure the Cold War is the greatest topic. It's not like there's a lot of failure involved in that that anybody knows about, right? (laughs) No. (laughs) It's just smooth sailing for, what, 20 years? Yeah, this is such a huge topic that we'll probably have to revisit it a couple times. I'm not sure we can cram it all into one episode. All I can say is when I was a kid, I thought it was called the Cold War because it was cold in Russia. Yes, I I did too. Okay, I wasn't the only one because every time you turn on the TV, when you I saw Russia. That, that's a term for like a, a war that's not really a war. It's it's you know almost like a not war of attrition. What am I trying to say? Uh, just like an escalation. <laughs> yep. It's the it's basically the uh, the 
the worldwide equivalent of like two dude bros facing off in the parking lot going like, <laughs> what you gonna do, bro? You wanna step, bro? Better come Get on. my face, bro. And you know damn well, neither one of them in like their Ed Hardy t-shirts and their backwards and MLB team baseball caps and their oh cargo short that you know neither one's gonna take a swing. But at the same time, like they sure make a lot of noise and draw a lot of attention. And that's kind of like what a Cold War is. My five-year-old brain, when we used to see the uh, parades in uh, Red Square, in October parades, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would see them and I'd be like, oh, it's it's Cold War because they got the, you know, got the little hats on. Yeah, that's why it's crazy. Cool. It's because we did it for them. That's, that's why uh, they're so pissed off. They want Korea War had Korea, you know, World War Two, and I, at that time everyone thought there was World War Three. Yeah, like oh, when yeah. you're little, there's one, two. There had to be three. Yeah, why would but you stop the on Where's the Return of the Jedi? Right? <laughs> exactly. Where we started the World War. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the media narration didn't really help with that because it seemed like we were always on the brink. You know, yeah, it's like the, oh, yeah, World Doomsday War Three. Like, Here it comes. It's coming. And then buy stuff. And okay. then you're on the you're on the DefCon and you're like, oh yeah, DefCon yeah. one. They're like, no, yeah, no. And like DefCon five, they're like, yeah, it's a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. It's how it's, does this? It's golf. Wait rules. a minute. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, it's golf rules. A lot of times when we have a new guest on the show, we like to ask, what do you think is one of the most epic fails in history? There's several, especially in the topic of the Cold War. Oh yeah. Like how many? There was so many times where we uh, we wouldn't be here right now. Um, yeah. Uh, two come to mind right here uh, because they really still affect us today. And I think w- one of the major ones was the failed uh, invasion, the Bay of Pigs invasion. Military <laughs> lost to pigs. E- well, it- <laughs> oh my God. To be clear, there were not really pigs involved. No. This we is talked this about is- the emu war. This is just- <laughs> there's, no, there's no ham. That's there's not no my public school education. <laughs> education. See? Nailed it. See? Nailed it. <laughs> I can't imagine what it would have been like to be a kid, but be old enough to kind of know what was going on. They called it the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in your inner concrete. <laughs> yeah, when you come to find out and, and you, you see, oh, you know, Kennedy was president when this happened. Mm-hmm. And then as I go to college, you're like, you didn't have to tell me. But I, the more I learned, I was like, that happened in the first four months. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't him. Yeah. He just signed off. I mean, like, he got the memo and was oh, getting yeah. up to speed while it was happening. Yeah. And hey, by the way, Mr. President, this is happening. Uh, say what? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, do not recall. Yeah, yeah he looks uh, up from, like, <laughs> some, like, his head pops out from some, like, secretary skirt. <laughs> uh, what was that? We're, we're doing what to who now? Oh, jeez. But, yeah, you, you get to find out, like, once you see the plan hatched, yeah. some of it actually sounds like, oh, this could have been something – decent to go upon but a lot of this stuff a lot of things that we talk about that's affecting us today happened to one of my i kind of really liked this president yeah. but he he messed up a lot of things oh, with yeah. the brinksmanship oh what they used to call it, the mutual sure destruction oh, oh press the button and you're you're gone and it started with eisenhower he, he didn't want to do the conventional warfare anymore he's like i've got this giant stick well, they've also got- because and, and the re- just not to interrupt but yeah. because he was a general and he was a military man like a career military man yeah. turned politician that he understood like he did not want to send troops to fight unless 100% necessary. Yep. Right. And his idea was like I've got this huge deterrent that will allow me to protect like he put the military over citizens in a way which f- coming from his point of view is like understandable where his thing was like I can protect my guys by threatening nuclear annihilation. So Yep. And everyone just saw that power. They saw that we were going to do it. We yeah. done dropped it. It all started with Truman. Why did they drop? And that totally changed the subject. But I've always been curious about this, and I'm just too lazy to look it up. Why was the second bomb dropped? Brett, do you want to field this one? Like yeah, the first I'll, bomb I'll, I'll was this. clearly this enough to be like, hey, so stop. it's a little complicated. They dropped it. Several reasons they dropped the first and right, second one. Right. It was. A, I've got this new weapon, you want to use it, it yeah. your itchy trigger finger. <laughs> but I don't understand, like, if you already dropped one, you've shown everybody what it can do. You've shown Japan, certainly. He, like, the, the emperor, had not... He wouldn't surrender? Wouldn't talked about surrendering yet. They wouldn't have negotiations about that was, this. Was that Hirohito? Yep. Yeah. And and here you know for his for everything that he had his mil- that poor guy not to really side the sidetrack he was young he yeah. was stupid young and his generals were really running the show yeah. and they were trying to throw a coup on him as well he was fearing for his life during this time so even he was actually fearing his life even when we were doing the occupation of Japan and getting the letters signed from him or getting the formal you know resignation or what what should we do yeah. how should we handle this yeah, yeah. and they were thinking about running a coup then and trying to do a last ditch effort. <laughs> 
and that would have been in. So the second one was to be like, hey, hey. Yeah. There's don't, more where don't this make came us do from. A third. Like, and that's just it. This isn't a fluke. There's more where this came from. And now the whole world has seen us drop two. And thank God they've been the only two that have ever yeah. been dropped. You know, there have been tests. We've tested over 2,000. The United States has done 2,000 alone yes. since that time. Oh, yeah. Don't, guys, don't move out to the West Coast. Yeah. I know it's real fun, but that <laughs> yeah. whole desert glows at night. Like, yeah, it's yeah. insane. Northern Nevada, especially. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. there's, a, there's a really neat website that shows, like, Every single ping. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. This and thing's it just, awesome. Yeah. It, it just goes nuts. Yeah, we'll have to link that in the show notes for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's and I stuff. apologize for getting this so off topic. I was just always curious about you're there good. was like a strategic that, reason or if just because, oh, yeah. like you said, Japan just wouldn't surrender, which sounds like Japan. You're like yeah. taking the ultimate. It's like getting jacked in the job by Mike Tyson and you, everyone knows you're out on your feet. You don't know it yet. But you're trying to find, oh, bitch, you didn't get me. And you go to swing again and and pass out halfway through your swing. But That's actually a good tie-in because I think it's worth pointing out that the U.S. had the first atomic bomb in 1945. They used it that same year. And four years later, the USSR tests their first one. Yeah. Because uh, Stalin had Soviet spies in the U.S. in the Manhattan Project. They literally just copied their work. And a couple years later, they're like, oh, we have our own. So, you know, Truman's over here uh, showing off, kind of flexing his guns and stuff and being like threatening like everyone with this bomb. And then next thing you know, he's not the only one that has it. And then where do you go from there? You know, it's it, it kind of, yeah, yeah, well, prediction, it was, it was definitely it was just, that because predictions yeah. were 10 years. They're like, well, they won't get it till like 59. Yeah. 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 And they show up in like 54 and they have it. And you're just like, yeah. Whoa, oh, no, 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 49, 49, 49. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, they thought later. it was, yeah, yeah, they thought it was in 54. And then no, it was you're like 49. Yeah. And then you're just like, oh, yeah. crap. I, I think 54 was the first uh, hydrogen uh, yep. test. Yeah. Which is another whole nother level of insanity. Uh, yeah. So you thought that you thought the first atomic bomb was bad. Yeah. The, the hydrogen bomb is, I want to say a thousand times worse. Yep. This thing is insane. Isn't, isn't there U.S. like nuclear subs that are basically out at sea pretty much all year long and have enough armament on board each one to essentially crack the planet in half? Uh, but basically, they we have probably a planet don't... killer level yeah. missiles. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know about like literally cracking the planet, but I will say annihilating. Yeah, I think it's worth pointing out. None of us have the clearance to know just how far this goes. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think did, it's I... pretty clear that like at the drop of a hat, it could get bad fast. Well, I do know that we've talked about this before. That there's been like an alarming number of cases where we've come like crazy close to not only like just nuclear war or whatever because of accidents but like yeah. idiots losing like the nuclear codes and all this shit oh, oh god yeah. apologize it took us way off course we were getting ready no, to talk that's, about the Bay of Pigs we're, we're say you're that's about to talk into the brink of nuclear war the yeah. closest yeah. we really had to had enemy nukes yeah. on our soil or closest to our soil but yeah the Bay of Pigs invasion is just a whole cluster of just a whole mess so totally you t- agree. you with anybody, anyone, any election that you have, any change of power, anyone who's in power, even people listening to your show, you're going to have critics. Oh, yeah. And so when Castro came to power, uh, funny thing again with Eisenhower, Castro oh, yeah. came to us and was like, hey, I really like – this is a theme throughout the whole Cold War. Yeah. Vietnam, Korea, you, you name the place. They've actually almost come to us first. And say, hey, I really like your Declaration of Independence. I like this this form that you're from this country. You threw off uh, colonial and you know our occupiers. You, you put the blueprint down. Yeah, we all you laid it out and we did it. And yeah. Eisenhower loved to play golf. Mm. Insanely loved to play golf. And Castro was not that big, so Eisenhower didn't have time to listen to him. <laughs> Wow. Castro, yeah, Castro comes to the United Nations uh, headquarters in New York, gives a huge, fantastic speech. Uh, I'm not a Castro sympathizer. I'm just saying it, yeah. it is what it is. And basically saying, laying it out, going, hey, if you, I'd love to have you help me. I mean, if you, I always tell the, my students, I'm like, if you didn't get drafted by your favorite team, who's your second favorite team? This they one. Draft you. And I said, and they draft you. <laughs> I said, and then you go play your first, and they go, I'm going to play dual. Twice as hard. I'm like, exactly. So this is it. Yeah. Anyone who yeah. doesn't come to us goes right to Russia. You go to the, the rival. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> and the whole Bay of Pigs was, you know, you're not playing ball with me. Now I'm going to go set it up. And Eisenhower was huge with trying to do covert, again, saving the troops thing that you mentioned, mm. covert operations, yeah. brinksmanship, anything to change the narrative to be pro-USA. Right. Yeah. So right. if you weren't playing ball with us, he would forcefully... Stuff. Yeah, and I think that's uh, it's worth pointing out that prior to this, we had a guy called Batista in power in Cuba, 
and um, he was more of an ally to the U.S., even though he was a pretty horrible dictator. Oh, yeah. He just happened to be capitalist. Oh. We've never really had a problem teaming up with horrible dictators, if you look at our history. Yeah, that's what I always love. We try to do the righteous thing. You yeah. know, people hide behind that. Yeah. I'm like, have you seen our track record? Yeah, <laughs> it's really bad, you guys. Like, like really, really yeah, bad. Yeah, Republic and all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can go real deep into that, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but basically, so the Cuban Revolution happened, Castro took over, and the U.S. didn't like that because he leaned a little bit more to the communist side. Yeah, he, he wanted to, he saw, because Cuba used to be America's little playground. Yeah. We go down there for the, you go to Florida and you can go to Cuba. It's kind of like us going to the Bahamas. Oh, you take yeah. a trip to Cuba yeah. and you had like shell gas stations, oil refineries, sugar cane, yeah. you named it. You had all sorts of stuff down there, hotels. Yeah. That's why their cars, they still have 1950s cars. Yeah. And they just keep trying to. <laughs> Keep those bad boys, yeah, fix them up and keep them working because that was the last time we were there. So Mm -hmm. if you really wanted a really sweet Bel Air (laughs) or old Belvedere, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. go, go to Cuba. They'll have it. But, um, (laughs) yeah, that was, that was our thing. And when, and that's twice that's happened. It's twice by the same president that a country has tried to what we call nationalize our resources. Yeah. Which in my theory kind of works out for me. It's like if, you had BP oil in Texas, and Texas is like, yeah, bro, I'm sorry, this oil's here. We're kind of don't, you know, United States was like, I want to consolidate our resources. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You want to get your own stuff. But that's, yeah, that's what Cuba did. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. So that stuff's not coming back to us. Uh, yeah. Well, at a different cost, a little higher. And they're like, oh, yeah, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all comes back to economics. It always does, you know. That's, yeah. It's money. Kind of unfortunate um, that this is still happening, you know, this vicious cycle. So for those that uh, don't know, a little background, uh, the whole Bay of Pigs invasion was basically a plan to sneak in with uh, Cuban-American soldiers and kind of incite a pro-West, would you say, revolution from within. The only problem is Castro saw them coming from a mile away. Weren't they also, like, Uh, at the last second got like half as many troops as they were expecting for their forces. Yeah, the training was actually happening here in Florida. Yeah, because they had Fort a few Lauderdale, CIA Miami. guys, like former yep. like special forces type guys. Yeah, we were in the advisor uh, roles. Like, yeah, kind of sprinkled in there, and there was a lot of Cuban nationalists who had fled when Castro came into power who were coming back to try to like re you know retake it. And they had a, um, a general from the DFR in there. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that with all these you know expatriates and him, that they could rally – people on the go like as they march towards the capital yep. castro's building they're like oh the people will see that we're here and they'll like drop what they're doing and grab arms and come join us and it's like no it's not yeah good. it didn't quite work out that way no because the because cuba saw it coming and they were waiting on the airfield weren't they uh pretty much they yeah. were on the beach they were on the beach yeah. artillery yeah. Yeah. yeah yep yeah and uh there was a little bit of a delay because the ships ran into like coral reefs or something and so that slowed them down and they were planning on doing this in the middle of the night it ended up being daylight by the time they were coming up on the beach so it was just a slaughter yeah <laughs> everything that was bad that went bad and then when you yeah. get just like you know it just happens here in history over and over and over again you get a resounding win like that oh you want to talk about drumming up some port oh, oh and then yeah. you can start throwing in everything oh god meant for it, this to it, happen it's all the these same things thing were as hitler kind of really it's like when hitler had his first like couple military victories where they were expected oh, they were just to lose it was like everything he said is right you know like he's right on everything we give him more power Give him more power. Uh, put all chips on black. I'm right on black. Exactly, and that's that's kind of what happened with Castro. There is that like every all the people who weren't naysayers, and naysayers were very quiet about being naysayers. But if they weren't naysayers, they went from maybe being like 50 percent on board or like cautiously on board to like all in. Yeah. And uh, so it backfired pretty spectacularly. Well, when you find out that it wasn't homegrown. This wasn't a grassroots revolution, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't some sparks, yeah, but they yeah. were refugees from there. Sure. But when you find Planned out that... by a foreign nation. Right. As soon yeah, as you find that in, that's, that's gonna... that You'll always rally around the flag. I mean, that, that's yeah. just constant. Oh, yeah. That happens in every single situ- uh, yeah. situation. I mean, if something similar happened in our country, like... Oh, yeah. Like an election being we, hijacked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we'd certainly rise. We'd rise up, yeah. right? Right? Oh, man. Right? Yeah. You would, you would think. No, no. We'll See, the, it's, it's, different, it's different between when it's, when it's an election yeah. than when it's yeah. physical violence. No, of course. Now, if there was yeah. like, you know, if Russia was marching down the streets like. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, know, you want to see things. That would be oh, man. a total yeah, different story. I dare yeah. any moron to come to America with. 
with violent that intentions. Would get, that would get both the right and the left together. Oh, yeah. yeah not only that, yeah. but like, just think about that. Not even just. Pl- it's like an alien invasion. Screw the government. Thing. Forget the government. Forget it. Like, I'm talking yeah, about like. Here. Try to march down the streets of America, the most heavily armed place on the planet. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck, man. There's so many people here who are just itching for something oh, like to happen. Like, the whole say, state I've of Montana, we got a bunch. Yeah, my, <laughs> most of my neighbors are like, that's what they do all day. Yeah, they I swear to God, if they it, come right? in here, I'm all going to kill yeah. them. And I'm Who's like, they? Anybody. I don't give a <laughs> Like, and so I'm like, you know, part of me wants to see this happen. Yeah. Like, if I could yeah. have a reset button, like just yeah. like one day, 24 hours, yeah. time stone. Hear ye, hear ye. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30 day free trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. For today's episode, I wanted to champion Dan Carlin's new book, The End is Always Near. Apocalyptic Moments from the Bronze Age Collapse to Nuclear Near Misses. If you're already a fan of Dan's, this book is required reading. If you've never heard of his Hardcore History podcast, this is an amazing introduction. The End is Always Near is a tour de force through some of history's darkest moments, and a very sobering reminder that despite our advances, civilization is always teetering on the edge of collapse. Now, as an adult with uh, two teenagers in the household, I should point out that I don't get to read as often as I would like, and that's where Audible comes in. Thanks to Audible, I've been able to read more books than ever before, even if it's usually while doing chores, walking the dogs, mowing the lawn, doing the dishes, catching up on laundry, cleaning up cat throw up, breaking up a fight over the Nintendo Switch, trying to stave off an impending existential crisis. Anywho, to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash epicfails with a K. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash E-P-I-K fails for your free audiobook. Oh, and before I forget, all four Epic Fails books are now available on Audible, including Not So Great Presidents by myself, Eric Slater, and Ben Thompson. Huzzah! Hi, I'm Evan, and I sure enjoy me some podcasts. Wow, this podcast sure is enjoyable. But sometimes, life has a little bit more pegged on for you than what you thought. Oh man, is that a missile? Uh, I'm okay? Thoughtscast. Part of the We Can Make This Work Probably Podcast Network. Too Young for This Trek. The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of... MC. Troy. And Eric. Their mission to introduce Tyler to strange new episodes. To seek out the best and worst media in the Star Trek franchise. To boldly go where several podcasts have probably gone before. You can listen to these goobers talk about Star Trek by searching for Too Young for This Trek or by visiting probablywork.com. The Cuban Missile Crisis has always been fascinating to me, and it's hard to imagine what it was like for the people involved, and it's one of the few moments where we really, as a world, came to the brink. Just based on the cool-headed decisions of a few individuals, the entire course of history was altered. To me, to throw in a nerd analogy, this this whole scenario feels like Captain Kirk facing off against the Kobayashi Maru in Star Trek. It's the no-win scenario, and yet he figures out a way around it. Granted, he cheated, but I, th- I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Were they trident missiles back then or Poseidon um, missiles? Jupiter missiles. Jupiter. Yeah. And figured it was one Greek or Ro- a Roman god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're Eros missiles. <laughs> what? Yeah. So the Bay of Pigs happens in 1961. Um, not long after that, NATO places strategic Jupiter missiles in Turkey. 
Turns out the Soviets didn't really appreciate nuclear warheads on their lawn. Uh, so they decided to give the U.S. a taste of its own medicine. On October 15, 1962, a U-2 spy plane took pictures of a construction site in Cuba, and they identified several SS-4 8-megaton warheads on the ground. Can I ask, do we know that that's what the photos actually were of? Or was it kind of like a Iraq, like these are weapons grade plutonium labs, and it's like, no, that's like a dentist's office, they just live in Iraq and everything sucks. No, that that was uh, that was legit. Okay, so that was yeah, what when they were, we we yeah. start seeing that, and they're like, because they have people who were yeah, like, I know Russians putting missiles there. Yeah, they were, they were you know. like, is this what? It, and they would say, is this what it is? And then all of a sudden, there would just be more and more and more okay. photos. And all of a sudden, they're like, here's here's the erection set. You know, here's here they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You now it's yeah. up, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. the guy posing with the blueprints and yeah. the thumbs up. <laughs> he's got the thumbs up, and he's, he sees the plane, and he's giving him a nice salute. It's like this is for you. You're holding up a vodka shot, like we're coming yeah. for you. Yeah. Can you imagine how scary it must have been for, like, the average American who's, like, so, if not straight up misled, like, uninformed? Um, Because, I mean, you think about, like, and and we have a different problem now. We have access to more information than any human being has ever had access to, and we're still intentionally ignorant. Yeah, you're trying to decipher what what is, either A, you decipher what is real and what's not. Right, what's misinformation and what's valid. Or you go, God, this sounds like what I already think is going to happen. That's the problem. And I I like this. But you have, back then, you had, you know, what, two, three news sources, the newspaper, the radio, and the television. And that was it. And your television, you probably had three ABC, CBS, and NBC, maybe a local affiliate of something, but you probably had like three news sources yeah, that was from it. television. A lot of people didn't have televisions back then. So you had yeah. radio, you had newspapers. So your, your, the breadth of information you were taking in was much more narrow. So like you kind of were at the mercy of whoever was presenting it was, that information. Yeah, it was yeah. filtered and it, not in a bad sense filtered, but it was sure. more like you had breaking news, but you also had things be, just so many people behind the scenes really collecting information yeah. and trying to get it to as fast as possible and disseminating right. it. Right, it's a very different delivery method of news. And, and you had the 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 narrative. I mean, everything was like, we're at war, but we're not at war. Yep. With this superpower that is every bit our equal across the planet. And like, yeah. it's just that, like, and, and think about it, like for the average American, not to mention the average citizen that kind of was aware of what was happening, like around the world. How f- Scary that must have been. Like these two countries that could decide our fate at any moment. They have the power to obliterate everybody. Yeah. And we have like no say in the matter whatsoever. Well, put this in perspective. This is before Vietnam, and most people yeah. when Vietnam started had no idea where it was. Yeah. On the map. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're you're really closed in. You're not as spread out as you thought. You're not as worldly. Yeah. You know, you don't have that that like you said, the access to all of human knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Culmination of yeah. all of human knowledge in the touch of your hand or yeah. your palm of your hand. In my um, pocket. Yep. It's nuts what we have now. Yeah. It really is. But when you're talking about the, the three news cycles, they had to wait. The The main problem I have with, yeah. uh, I'd say, like cable news. The is, 24-hour news yeah, cycle yeah. and all that. Yeah. 24-hour news cycle is two things. One, you have to understand they've got to sell advertisement. So it's yep. got to be entertaining. Right. So they're going to give you, hey, this is happening. This could be – and they need to make it exciting so you tune yep. in. They give you – if they no have one sentence – yeah, if they have one sentence worth of, of stuff, they're, they're going to – sh- an hour. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so, they'll have different talking heads, you know, mm-hmm. giving yep. their commentary. And, and the thing is they don't even verify don't it. They don't no. even verify. Yeah. It's not even fully verified news. It's basically rumor mills. Yeah, because yeah. you got to be the first – they have this feeling you have to beat them by a second. If you yeah. can beat them by one – the other news mm-hmm. cycles by one second, we're the first on the scene. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I want you to be the most correct, trustworthy because right. I'll wait. I will literally wait. 24 hours on something. When I see something yeah. happening, I go, boom. Uh, the latest thing with yeah. the, uh, let's put it here, helicopter New York crashed. So oh, helicopter yeah. crashed. And I said, I had in a split second, is this another 9-11? But I was like, helicopter is a little kind of different. Yeah. And I said, let me let me see how it goes. And I just watched the news for about 20 seconds. And from the cameraman's angles, when you see stuff, I'm like, it's nowhere near as a panic. This is an emergency situation, yeah. but it's not a panic under attack situation. I said, yeah. I'll wait. And sure enough, the next day or two, you get to find out everything that's going yeah. on. And I'm like, that's that's how I'm I am now with things like that. I try to take a I guess a 1960s view <laughs> of news now. It's just right. let the cycle go through. Yeah, let's find out what's really going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I always tell, I like I tell my students, you know, they get seven minutes to get to class, and it only takes six minutes for a 1959 Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile to get here to Jacksonville. <laughs> so, and, it's insane and, to think. Yeah, about. and they yeah. go, well, where would you be if that happened? Yeah. I was like, I'm getting in the car and driving yeah. to Mayport, taking yeah. my six minutes and getting as close to Mayport a- Naval Station as I can. Yeah. And they're like, why? Why don't you drive drive away? I said, because you can't outrun it. Yeah. Mm. Might as well yeah. go. Wow, that's a white. And just be gone. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, just yeah, get yeah, towards, yeah, it, towards the just, center. <laughs> yeah. Poof me. I just want to be poofed. And so, yeah. lo and behold, there's about 160 kids who know of a nuclear reaction. You know, drive to the naval station. Drive to yeah. Get, get as <laughs> close. Your butt goodbye. Get as close to the epicenter as you can. Yeah. Don't don't get to the outside. Don't duck and cover. And before it's you not. guys, anybody <laughs> listening that has a problem with Brett telling students that, <laughs> before you condemn that, please keep in mind that the United States is prior. Education for children, the threat of nuclear bomb incoming is to literally hide under your desk. Yes. Yeah. The duck and, and cover. Hope really bad that you live. Dum dum, beetle dum dum, beetle dum dum, beetle dum dum. There was a turtle by the name of Bert, and Bert the turtle was very alert. When danger threatened him, he never got hurt. He knew just what to do. He's duck. <laughs> And cover. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Duck and cover. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. The yeah. the infomercial on that I showed him that one. So oh, that's, with the that's turtle. Oh yeah, you yeah, showed yeah, the yeah, turtle yeah. duck and cover. Yeah. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. And then it was like, hey, it's Tommy. Tommy's gonna he's gonna hide <laughs> behind this corner. In that like first season of South Park, they did that with lava. Oh my god! Oh, I like, remember that. Yes. Coming, just duck and cover, and they yeah. they're like, oh okay. And then the lava's coming, and he'll like crouch down, and just burns, just burns right through, through him. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, it's one of those things. Was like, listen, your best part was, hey, they want you. It was a tornado drill. Yeah. We had no idea, and even till today, you know, you tell people, what are you really gonna do? Like, well, there's take a cold. There's nothing you can do. do. That's why these children are practicing to duck and cover. Just as you do in your school. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. It is such a big explosion, it can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over town. But if you duck and cover like Bert, you will be much safer. You know how bad sunburn can feel. The atomic bomb flash could burn you worse than a terrible sunburn, especially where you're not covered. And I, and Unless I, you have a bunker somewhere that you're right near, not you're like you're. Oh, I can get there in I two go, minutes. Yes, if you can get the siren and get there. And people, here's the crazy part: <laughs> you're in Florida, there are no basements. Yeah, and people yeah. built bunkers. So to to despite the you know despite the <laughs> being underwater yeah. in there, they were like, we're building this. I'm gonna yeah. scoop on my way to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you have like five years worth of oxygen just dragging behind you. Oh like, it's so stupid. Basically, if you live in Florida and there's a nuke anywhere near Florida, you're dead. You're just gone. Yeah. 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 First, you duck. And then, you cover. Hope it hits you, like real close. And hope yeah. you don't get those nasty ones. That they're going to explode above you. The dirty ones? Yeah. 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 They, and radiation. Oh, oh, just like radiation. We're not going to blow you up, but we're going to give you cancer yeah, in like oh, five minutes. Oh, man. God. Yeah. Hope you enjoy face tumors. Jesus. Well, that's a cheery subject. It's <laughs> <laughs> the thing about nuclear no, annihilation. Yeah. There's not really any funny way to mm-hmm. look at it. Because yeah, if anything, totally. that you're like, ha, ha, ha. You think about it for about two more seconds, and you're like, oh, no, I'm sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I'm really scared and yeah. sad. And then the thing is, like... At some point, you would like to believe, and I think of like the fifties as that era, the forties and, and earlier, and maybe even the fifties, it started to slip a little bit with like McCarthyism and stuff. But there had to be like almost a blind faith of like whatever comes along, our government's got us; they're going to keep us safe. And now you're like, I don't trust these 
with a parking ticket. There was there was yeah. blind faith all the way through Lyndon Johnson. Yeah, mm. and then yeah. Viet, uh, all of a sudden was, Vietnam and everything. The Tonkin yeah. Gulf Resolution oh, started yeah. to bring that down. That's where, yeah. yeah. That's hey, there's a Cold War gem for you, too. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, we actually talked about that on the first episode. That's a, that, yeah. Yeah, Lyndon Johnson <laughs> sucks, yeah, man. He, he, was, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was a piece of work. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah there was real. literally, there was blind faith that yeah. this was going to happen. If you just did this, you're going to be okay. I'm envious of that. Well, there's still Almost. some people that I mean, have that. I, I do so. appreciate that we don't have blinders on anymore and that yeah. we call people, that hold people accountable, or in theory, at least hold people accountable. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as like living your day to day life, it sucks having like, this constant state of like existential terror. Well, we're almost at the opposite. Yeah. We almost have good people who are in there. And there really is good there's people a lot of them. who are actually in government trying to do the right thing. Oh, yeah. Um, but you're so damn cynical yeah. that. You're looking. You're. Lo- we're, we really try hard to find someone who goes out. Like when I'll see people fighting, mm-hmm. fighting for someone to have, you know, to be able to get cancer treatment. They're like, "Well, why, why are we gonna do that?" I'm like, "Well, yeah. dude, he's got because it's cancer, human like decency, it's, exactly." Yeah, and right. I think that's a lot that's been going out here is that you hear mm-hmm. the opposite of human, you know, or indecency yeah. going on. But I don't think I truly don't feel like that's the populace. I think the populace that they see that going like, dude, you're you're an a hole yeah. for saying like <laughs> this person doesn't need to get help. But yeah, that was the thing. We usually thought that the the government was just gonna help us out. They, they would if you listen to them, it'll happen. Yeah, things will be rough. That's why we pay our taxes that. and that's why we voted for it. This entire situation was really the perfect storm of every possible thing that could go wrong all going wrong at the same time. The more that I research and learn about the Cuban Missile Crisis, the more I'm thankful for being alive, for being here today. And while we are as a nation, as a world, going through one of the most trying times in modern history... I think it's good to consider that it could always be worse. And in fact, if you look at history, it most likely has been worse a dozen times over. Not to make light of the current situation, but it's worth pointing out that we're not on the brink of a nuclear war. We're not currently being invaded by Visigoths. Our village isn't being ransacked by Vikings. I mean, I'm not saying that couldn't happen, but I mean, so far, I think we're in the clear for the moment. First, you duck, and then you cover. So that's it for part one of our Cuban Missile Crisis coverage. Thanks again to Brett Ricketts for guesting on our episode, and for his patience with this episode coming out so late. Stay tuned for part two, here on Epic Fails of History. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at Probably Work for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com. Is that kind of cheesier? All right, so kind of did 1980s Peter Jennings. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> So I was about to, so I was planning on having this episode out. So I recorded, so we recorded this episode back in July. As always, I'm with my right man. <laughs> no. My right what, man? Yeah. My no. right man? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Everyone would think, too. Get it. He's no stranger. Like, <laughs> 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 All right. I'll get, I'll get. Once I get rolling, I'm usually okay. <laughs> it's been a day. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I was making sure it was recording. <laughs> you know, we don't want those issues again. Duck and cover. <laughs>